the best way to get a sense of how to describe the shape of the distribution is to visualize the data. So let's get into that for a bit. Now the first way that we can visualize the distribution of a numeric data set is by imagining buckets that represent different intervals along the x-axis. And you can choose how big the buckets are. Let's say in this case we're going from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, etc. And then by counting up how many observations fall into each of those buckets, we can create what we call a histogram. Next, let's talk about box plots, right? Remember when we were describing our data, we divided our data into four quarters, right? And the middle two quarters were described as the interquartile range. Well, we can draw a box that represents the interquartile range with a line in the middle representing the median. So with our box plot, the interquartile range is in the box itself and that'll have 50% of the data. The median, which is the value that splits all of the data into two separate groups, that's represented by the middle line in the middle of the box. The whiskers are extended out to 1.5 times the interquartile range, and any values outside of that range we call the outliers. Now let's take a look at a categorical variable like height. Each observation, so James, Barra, Sarah, etc., etc., has been categorized as either short, medium height, or tall, right? And we can summarize this categorical variable by counting up the number of observations that land up in each category. So, for example, we could say that there have been four people that have been categorized as short. We can say that there are two that are medium height, two that are tall, and all together we know that there are eight all together. Now, if you want to know what proportion of the total are short, right, we call that the relative frequency, then of course what you do is you divide the number of short people by the total, and you've got 0 0.5, which is a half. And if you want to know what the percentage is, well, you simply multiply by 100. We've got the percentage for each category. If we want to visualize this data, of course we can use a bar chart where the height of the bar is either the actual number of observations or the relative frequency or the percentage. An alternative is to use the pie chart. Now let's think about two categorical variables, right? Gender and height. First thing we do is we create a two-way frequency table. Two ways because we've got both of our variables involved now and we use one in the columns and one in the rows. And again, we can calculate the relative frequency or the percentage which can be represented in brackets next to the value. So I've calculated what percentage each cell is relative to the column total for the column that it's in. So for example, in the male column, three men are short. That's three out of a total of five men altogether. So 60% of the men are short, and so on. Now I'm going to show you two ways that you can visualize this data. So firstly, you can have a stacked bar chart where the height of each column is determined by the actual number of observations. Or you can stack them by percentage so that each column towers up to 100%, making it much easier to visually compare proportions. If you have two numeric variables, how are you going to visually represent them? Well, one thing you can do is you can create a scatter plot. So a scatter plot is where each point corresponds to the x and the y coordinates of a given observation, or in this case, a person. So for example, we've got Sarah, she's 34 years of age, and she weighs 63.5 kilograms. So this is her point on the scatter plot. And of course, you can add a trend line. And then remember, by convention, we usually plot the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. And what do I mean by that? Let me, let me just explain that to you because it's kind of quite important. It's all about the direction of causation. And so what do I mean by that? Well, in this case, we think that a change in age might affect weight. In other words, as you get older, you might gain weight. We don't think that a change in your weight affects or has any causative impact on your age. Weight, by contrast, might be dependent on age or might be affected by age. There might be some sort of causative relationship between what your age is and what your weight is. And so weight is a dependent variable. And typically, by convention, we put those onto your y-axis. Now things are about to get interesting. How would we plot two numerics and one categorical variable? Well, first of all, just imagine plotting your two numeric variables, one against each other, on a scatter plot in the way that we've described already. Now, for each of the points on the scatter plot, we use the categorical variable to assign them into a different group or a different, in this case, maybe a different color. Okay, 
Then, of course, we can also draw a trend line independently through each of those categories, one for males and one for females, and we can see two graphs superimposed upon one another, and we can see the difference between the genders with respect to the relationship between age and weight. Now, let's talk about two categorical and one numeric variable. First of all, let's consider just the numeric variable by itself, in this case, weight. And how would we plot that? Well, we'd create perhaps a box plot. Now we want to use just one of the categorical variables, let's start with gender, to disaggregate that data and redraw our box plot. What we've got here is we've got the same weight data being used to draw this plot. Those observations that have been categorized as female have been used to draw the pink plot. And of course, we want to represent more than one categorical variable. We want to include height here. So what do we do? We disaggregate the data once again by height. So now we've got weight and it's plotted, but the plot has been disaggregated by first gender and then height. And so we can see the difference in weight between males and females in tall people. And the difference in weight between men and women for medium height people. And of course, we can see a difference amongst short people and the difference there seems to be most pronounced. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.